I'm currently staring at the utility closet. This is where all of the solar components are going to go. And I have no idea how I want to configure this. I think my main problem is I want the closet to look pretty. If it didn't have to look pretty, we wouldn't have an issue. When I open this door that we're going to eventually put in right here to close all this off, I want to look at it and be like, yeah. I mean, if an electrician comes in here and says, yeah, this is trash, I'm okay with that, just as long as like I think it looks pretty. Side note, I think me and Jay are gonna do a tour of the bus. We've already gone over where everything's gonna go in a previous episode, but that was months ago, and we do have a lot of new subscribers since then. I kind of get this feeling that you guys have just kind of been way off in the distance you guys need a more in-depth look at how the bus is going to look when it's done i can explain all the framing that we've been putting up where the walls are going to go where everything is obviously the bunk beds are behind me but those are kind of a given anyway it's pushing eight o'clock and the kids are inside it's probably their bedtime see you guys tomorrow I'm not taking any more chances with how <laughs> how low my voice how is. How low your voice is. How it doesn't project. It doesn't project. My voice projects because I have this big cavernous mouth. Yours doesn't. <laughs> I'm most excited about the kitchen. Yeah. The countertops, open shelves, and my big sink. This kitchen is going to be bigger than some of the kitchens we've had. <laughs> yeah, and the sink is going to be nicer than any sink I've ever had. We're going to have more countertop space in this bus than, than we, we had in our apartment. In our apartment and our first house. Maybe just as much. Yeah, and it's going to be so Today we're going to work on the rest of the solar. We're going to see how much of that utility closet we can get set up. We have to run our cables from our solar panels down into the bus over to the utility closet. And those cables are going to enter a charge controller, which is going to give us our basic info about the batteries, how much charge we have left, how much power we're bringing in from the solar panels. And then we have to run lines from the charge controller down to the batteries. And then the batteries connect to the inverter. And then with the inverter, I can choose between shore power or battery power. So I'll put a link down in the description to the kit we actually bought. If you're interested in that, go check that out. We bought six 200 watt monocrystalline panels. We connected those panels in series, giving us a total of 1200 watts on the roof. And with our battery bank, we went with four 100 amp hour AGM batteries. And with our inverter, which is essentially the device that powers everything. We went with a 3000 watt pure sign inverter. While we're hooked up to shore power, not only will it be powering everything in our bus, it will also be charging our battery bank. All right guys, you'll have to ignore the mess for a lot of this. We just have a bunch of stuff in here to keep it out of the rain. And then also tools and stuff that we'll need while we're in here. Pretty much right here in this area from the door to the window here is going to be like our entertainment system. We're going to have a TV on the wall right there. And then to cover up this wheel well, we're going to build out a built-in entertainment system that's going to house everything that we need, like a sound bar, all of our devices that we use with our TV, uh, probably our router, all that good stuff. In this area right here in between the entertainment system and the kitchen pretty much all the space below these two windows is going to be a pull up table for the kids we're going to have either three stools right here or maybe some sort of like long bench with storage inside that way the kids actually have a spot to sit down and eat 
me and Jay are totally fine with eating wherever in the bus, but we did want to have a designated area for the kids to eat, do schoolwork, art, all that stuff. From this window here, about where that ladder is, all the way to that wall is going to be part of our kitchen. We're gonna have a pretty good sized kitchen in this bus compared to a lot of schoolies out there. From this point all the way to the wall is gonna be countertops. Our sink is gonna be directly under that window right there. That's why I ran the water lines up to that point. Uh, that's a good 10 and a half feet of floor cabinets that we're gonna have. And then above the cabinets, we're gonna have floating shelves, probably two on each side of the window and they're going to span the entire length all the way to the window and then start right there and go all the way to the wall on this side of the bus we're going to have our refrigerator and our stove on this side of the refrigerator we're going to have a pull out we're going to have a pull out to where we can store spices and canned goods and stuff like that and we're also going to build a platform for our refrigerator to sit on so we're actually going to have a drawer underneath the refrigerator and maybe up top i'm not sure haven't really decided and we're going to have cabinet uh and then we're going to have cabinets leaving the refrigerator all the way to somewhere in this general area right here so we're going to have countertop space over here too just not that much from this general area right here, literally all the way to the driver's seat, we're going to have one long couch. That span right there is about 15 feet, but we wanted to have a ton of seating area because we're a family of five and we wanted a big kitchen because that's one thing that me and Jay both didn't want to let go of was a good sized kitchen. We're not really, in terms of the kitchen, we're not really downsizing that much. And then uh, the seating area is super long. This is pretty much going to be the only seating area up here. So we wanted it to be big, uh, plenty of room for if we want to lay down on it, we can. The kids really love to watch movies and we love to watch brand new movies with them and TV shows. So we wanted to have a good size area that we could sit down in and watch movies, watch shows and do that sort of thing. So for the doors, we went with pocket doors pretty much everywhere. Um, it is pretty nice being able to undo this clamp here for the doors for the doors we went with pocket doors everywhere it just slides into the wall now the only downside is you have to build a pretty thick wall so if it wasn't for this pocket door um, I wouldn't have needed almost five inches of wall space here entering the hallway to this side is going to be our utility closet where our washer dryer which is right there is gonna sit right here. I've got it out of the way just because today we're gonna to be working on the electrical. Uh, but this is gonna be our utility closet area. There is a wall from here over to the end of that plywood. That's That wall right there is gonna start our bathroom and go that way. And then on this side we have our bunks. Right now it's being used as a tool storage. The bunks right here are not gonna be open. We're gonna put a wall that starts here and goes all the way down to where the bunk beds end and then the kids will have an opening that they can crawl into to get into their box. This is our bathroom right here. This platform right here is where our toilet's going to be and then this flooring right here is where our vanity's going to be and then we just got our shower pan in. It's a 30 by 32 shower pan so it's a pretty good size for a schoolie. Hey babe. And then beyond this door is mine and Jay's bedroom. Um, this, this is the start of our bed. It's going to start here and go all the way to that wall. And this is all the space that we have underneath the bed. Standing room right here 
and we're hoping to put a built-in what's the word I'm looking for dresser yeah storage drawers. built yeah built-in storage right here on this wall so that we can get out of bed stand in pretty much the only spot that we have that's going to be free in our room and access all of our storage right there I have a light switch and an outlet so does Jay and then at the foot of our bed is our big window right there another key thing that I wanted to mention is we are not completely closing this door off eventually I'm going to put a little hatch right here on this back wall that way if we ever do have an emergency I can remove that and we can still get out through that back door we're gonna start with the shore power inlet this is the plug-in that allows us to hook our generator up or we can hook straight to shore power like at a campground or something like that this requires a round hole instead of using a hole saw to cut this out I'm just gonna use a flat blade on my multi-tool So this inlet is a 30 amp plug and that requires a 10 gauge wire. Mommy put that up last week. All right, that's the back right there. Let's get it out of the way so I don't touch it. I don't want to get hit with 120 again. I have a helper. What are you eating? That mommy gave me. Cheese. Are you excited about the bus? Yeah. You are? Is there anything else you want to add? I want to see my doll. Your doll? It made up a land that I got. Where is it? Upstairs. Well, you don't have to go all the way in the house. No, I'll Okay. That's the youngest. So now that the inverter is mounted and the shore power plug is installed, I'm going to wire the shore power to the inverter and then the power wire leaving the inverter going to the sub panel. So it's pretty cut and dry.
the hot months here in Tennessee have officially arrived. I think last time I checked it was like 95 degrees, but it felt like 108. The humidity is like 80% course it is. We got a good amount of work done today. We got the inlet installed for the solar panel wires. We got those hooked up inside the bus and we got the charge controller mounted. Piece by piece the solar system is getting installed. So, so these are the main leads for the solar panels. That's the inlet right there. Always go a little overkill on the uh, Silicone you can never be too sure. We got power to the charge controller So that is good kind of made me nervous hooking that thing up. The plan was to hook up the batteries today, but The shelf that I made is a little too big for that spot So I have to cut out a chunk of the wall But once we get the batteries hooked up we can hook the charge controller up to the batteries and Then the batteries we can hook those up to the inverter and technically all of the main components to the solar system will be installed at that point. We'll have to go through, check everything, make sure everything's good. We'll be able to hook the generator up straight to the power inlet that we've got now and uh, power the whole bus at that point. So yeah, not a bad day. So we got two of the batteries hooked up. I couldn't hook up the other two because the battery cables that we have are just a little bit too short in the way that we've got them sitting. The terminals aren't close enough together so I can't use those cords. So we're gonna have to buy some new cords and actually make our own. But until then I went ahead and plugged two of them up and uh, everything's connected. So I've got the generator plugged up, the shore power is hooked up, the inverter should pick up the shore power and automatically connect to shore power and start charging the batteries. How's your hair look, Jess? I mean, it looks okay right now. You just did your whole work. Hmm. Camera ready moment. <laughs> See, look at this. Look, look, I got, I got this right here, and obviously I want to fix that before the camera starts recording. Well, I mean, to be fair, so did I. Yeah. But my hair looks great anyway. So. We got most of the solar system hooked up. Most of it. We still gotta hook up the other two batteries, but we've gotta order some more stuff. It's for... taking forever. It is taking a long time. Just, you know, I don't... This stuff's complicated. The first time I hooked up the batteries, I hooked them up wrong. So the entire bus smelled like rotten eggs. It was basically emitting battery fumes, which is uh, very toxic. Yeah, not great. Not great. So yeah, with that being said, we still got two batteries hooked up and now all we have to do is turn the inverter on and we can power everything in here, except for the AC, completely on solar. So we're just only running on 100 amp hours of battery 
as opposed to 200 amp hours when we get the other two batteries installed. And when we want to run the air conditioner, all we have to do is hook the generator up. Yeah. The system is operational, but we'll add the finishing touches in the next episode. And also, I'm pretty sure we're going to go ahead and start putting plywood on the walls in the back. That will be exciting. Define everything. But anyway, guys, if you're not subscribed to our channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. That way you'll get notified every single time we post an episode. And uh, catch you on the flip side. And then, and yeah, <laughs> uh, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. I think what I said was better. Catch you on the flip side. See you guys on the next episode. Were you just making fun of me? <laughs>